Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle. I've got a really exciting video for you guys today. This is what I like to call New Music Shuffle. I try to do these about once a month where I talk about a selection of albums that I've been enjoying during the month. This is covering the month of June 2022. Just several albums that have come out this month that I've really enjoyed and have had fun listening to that I want to share with you guys. I think it's quite an eclectic crew of albums here that I'm sharing that I think there should be something for everyone to love on this list. You might not like certain things because they're more aggressive or more heavy or more quirky and avant-garde but there's going to be something here for everybody i believe so hopefully you'll enjoy the show and me talking through some of these albums i'll try to go through them fairly quickly to give you an impression of why i like them why i think they're worthy of your attention uh first on the list i'm going to talk about charlie griffiths and his album tick talika Charlie Griffiths, of course, is one of the guitarists of the band Haken, one of my favorite progressive metal bands. I think they're fantastic, and I just saw them live not too long ago. They really blew the roof off of the, the place that I saw them in. They were just incredible. And Charlie Griffiths is such a great player, and this is his first solo album. Really, it's the third in a string of solo albums that the band have come up with over the past several years. First we had Richard Henshaw with Cocoon, which was a fantastic album that came out a few years ago. And last year we had Ross Jennings, the vocalist of Haken, come out with his solo album, The Shadow of My Future Self, which I really love and have recommended. Now this is the third, Charlie Griffiths, and this one is a much heavier affair. This is a very heavy, intense, dark album but it's really well crafted and it's a wonderful concept record that I think is worth people's attention. But if you're thrown off by the heavier growling vocal type style, there's going to be parts of this that aren't for you. There's definitely influences from 80s thrash metal and things of that nature that might not be to everyone's taste. But if you can accept some of that stuff, uh, there's just a real beauty to this album and how it's constructed and it's really well done. I really appreciate the structure and the musicianship on board. It just sounds really good. The production values are high and it has an interesting concept as I've mentioned. Uh, the concept revolves around the prehistoric reptile known as Tiktaalik. Uh, this concept album is 375 million years in the making with nine tracks drawing inspiration from themes of geological time, fossilization, transformation, and humanity's connections with each other and the planet we inhabit. And he released a bunch of interesting singles that had almost cartoonish elements, animated video that are called Saturday Morning Cartoon Style, but really fun juxtaposition between that cartoonish nature and the more heavier nature of a lot of the tracks on this album. So really fun. You know, I, I love Haken because they have a sense of humor and they're not shy to use it in their song styles and Charlie Griffiths definitely has a piece of that here and especially in the the lead up to the album itself but it's just it's a it's a beautiful album every track leads right into the next one so it's definitely has that concept feel to it starts off with an acoustic opening before a heavy riff comes in and a super thrashy metal section starts off the album setting the stage for this is going to be a heavy album you know get ready for the intensity because it's definitely here arctic cemetery is one of the first singles that was released and features tommy rogers from between the buried and me on clean and growling vocals a uh, really really beautiful track though cool groovy song that's constantly shifting definitely going through some different heavier sections luminous beans is one of my favorite tracks as well featuring great vocals from daniel de jong from textures really cool vocalist that he's brought on board with different styles and bringing different things into the group of uh, some great guitar work here of course as it's somewhat of a guitar solo album you'd expect and there's a cool quirky instrumental section with some fun keyboard work in the middle with a cool jazzy loungy style vibe towards the end it's, re it's really interesting and even though it resides in this heavy thrashy mood there's still a lot of experimentation and diversity of sound that they're playing with and all the guests that charlie brings on board really add a lot of new dimensions to the music that make it really fascinating dead in the water it has some really interesting stuff as well and some aggressive vocals from neil purdy some really heavy riffing and an interesting saxophone part from rob townsend some but 
of course, it's very heavy and very thrashy as well. So In Alluvium is a really cool grooving song with a fantastic Jordan Rudess solo. Uh, Vladimir Lalik from Organized Chaos sings the vocals here with an almost Daniel Gildan-like style quality to his vocals that I noticed. But Tiktalika, which comes later, is is full-on instrumental craziness and really cool, almost a King Crimson-esque vibe to some of the bits of it with some really cool rhythms. And it just continues from there. Crawl, Walk, Run is a really heavy song that really showcases some thrashy metal, but some epic sweeping guitar solos and brutal riffs. Uh, Under Polaris brings it all home together by reprising some of the stuff from Arctic Cemetery and ending with that that acoustic guitar that started the album so it's it's a really great full circle of an album and yes it does have the heavy thrashy metal sound which isn't always to my taste i don't really care for the growling vocals very much but they're not too overpowering for me on this album there's a lot of variety in the vocal styles that breaks it up and doesn't just hit you over the head with purely the aggressive growling vocals and so it's more pal palatable to me, and there's just a lot going on here that's interesting to take in, and a lot that grabs my ear and attention. So one of the standout albums so far of the year that deserves some extra attention. So I wanted to spend some time on that one. Really cool. Check it out. If you're not too scared off by the heavy, thrashy metal vibe and some growling vocals, there's definitely a lot of great proggy stuff to unpack here, and some great work by a fantastic guitarist and rising star in the prog community so really excited about that one next i want to talk about something quite off the beaten path here this is bubble math and their album turf ascension bubble math is a u.s based band formed in minneapolis minnesota in 1995 even though they've been around since like the 90s, they have only released three albums. This is their third album. Such Fine Particles of the Universe was their first release. And then they released Edit Peptide a few years back, which was quite a span between albums. Luckily, the span is a bit shorter between Edit Peptide, which came out, you know, three or four years ago, and this one, which is coming out now. And they're quite an eclectic group of musicians. It's it's a really interesting stew of influences. It's very quirky prog. Uh, there's definitely some King Crimson, Gentle Giant, Frank Zappa even in the mix with a lot of twi twisting time signatures and, and things that are off kilter and, and strange. But somehow there's a hookiness to it as well, where there's things that grab your attention and give you somewhat of a of a life vest amongst, amongst this chaotic sea of sounds. It's really complex and interesting. Sometimes it can border on a bit almost too chaotic for my ears, but they tend to bring it back home to a, a melody that grabs you and is able to ground you amidst all of the crazy chaotic nature of the music. And each track on here, there's only four tracks, each one is, is fairly lengthy, and they just take you on such a journey. There's so much going on in the music, it's almost overwhelming on a first listen, but as you continue listening, it develops these extra layers that you're uncovering, and really is a fascinating listen. I just listen to this music with such a big smile on my face. It's a little bit avant-garde for some of my tastes, a little bit math-rocky, and angular, and, and a little bit strange, but I think the the hooks the melodies the things that keep bringing you back some of the vocals that are really really surprisingly excellent and some harmonies and and sections that are really pleasing sounding ground you amidst this avant-garde sea of eclecticness that almost seems to threaten to derail the train a bit but then it all brings it back together in a satisfying way and just it's a it's a bit of a magic trick that they're performing here that leads to my fascination with their work and with their music i really fell in love with edit peptide and this album just solidifies that love because i think this is along the same lines as edit peptide and has the same sort of style to it uh, the first track, Surface Tension, just non-stop shifting time signatures and bizarre musical sections, but keeping you afloat, like I said, with some interesting, catchy melodies. There's a jazzy, almost eclectic feel that keeps you guessing as you move through this track. 
everything the second track is a more lighter song it's not quite as chaotic as the first but it's still complex but it grabs you and it has these great pleasing melodies that really are gorgeous to listen to decrypted starts off in that kind of vein but then moves towards more chaotic funky grooves and really has a cool quirky gentle giant type section about seven minutes in with some weird counterpoint style music uh, refuse is another quirky and strange track that ends the album it has some pop sensibilities and catchy grooves to it even amongst the crazy chaotic nature of the music and about four and a half minutes in they just go crazy in this circus funhouse sort of feel with quirky instrumentals that go close to being off the rails but bring you in just as you're about to go off the edge and so it's it's adventurous music to be sure it's really fun to listen to i have a smile on my face but i have to be in a certain mood to listen to it because of how demanding it is and it's not something you could just casually turn on in the background and just have a casual evening with you know it's something you have to really pay attention to and try to to make sense of all the the time signature shifts and all of the quirky instrumental sections something that would drive my wife crazy to play for her but i really enjoy as a fan of quirky interesting complex music so if that's what you're into this is going to be a blast to listen to it's just it's a fun record next i wanted to mention seventh wonder and their album the testament Seventh Wonder is a progressive metal band that formed in Stockholm, Sweden in the year 2000. A really polished prog metal band. That's what I think of when I hear Seventh Wonder is just they have a really pristine production. They have a really dialed in sound and it's just they're a well oiled machine at this point. They just sound so perfect in their execution of the music they're doing and the, the production values are high and the band is really performing on an expert level. They have these big catchy hooks that that really make for an epic listen, but they also have these quirky, cool, proggy instrumental sections as well. And so it's a good balance, and it's all grounded by their singer, Tommy Karavik, who's just an incredible vocalist. He's sung a lot on a diff lot of different uh, Arion albums as well. He's just really, really an amazing vocalist, and his vocals just pierce through here, and he's very soulful in his style, and goes through a lot of different feels from more heavy aggressiveness, but also some really lighter, soaring, majestic vocals as well. And it just, it's a fantastic performance all the way through. But, you know, the band itself is not to be ignored either because they just are so tight as musicians. There's a lot of great guitar soloing, there's a lot of great keyboard soloing, and even some really cool bass moments. All the band members are able to shine, but what really strikes me throughout this album is just this big arena rock AOR type sound that pervades a lot of the choruses. They're big, they're catchy, they're fun, and it reminds me of the classic 80s arena rock heavy metal music. I really like Carry the Blame is more of a ballad feel after two more upbeat rocking songs, some pleasing guitar work and laid back vocals over a keyboard atmosphere, really interesting melodies in the vocals. Reflections is a really cool quirky instrumental that has really great somber piano before the band kicks in with some awesome prog metal instrumental excursions, great guitar and keyboard shredding, uh, really fun listen for this piece. The Red River starts off with some cinematic orchestration behind a piano, but before the whole band enters with a rousing section, really cool, beautiful vocal showcase, uh, just really goes through a lot of different feels and moods. And I love Under a Clear Blue Sky, the, the longest track of the album, somewhat of a mini epic here, some solo clean guitar opens up the song, adding some bass as it goes along, a lot of energy, great guitar riffs, awesome melodies almost a sort of dream theater inspired guitar and keyboard soloing trade-off uh, towards the mid to end section. There's some heavier metal moments, but it slows down towards the end and reprises the main vocal hook to great effect. It's just a really expertly crafted small mini epic that really is great to listen to. And I'm really proud of these guys and the way that they're able to craft this really good sounding music. 
Uh, it ends with Elegy, which is a beautiful ballad with some synth and viola and steel string and acoustic guitar. It's very beautiful and really showcases Tommy's versatile vocal range. And so it's just, it's a beautiful ballad that ends the album on a great note. So all in all, just a really pleasing album that I think is right in line with what the band does best. And if you like this sort of polished progressive metal type music, this is definitely one that's worth checking out with some big hooks and some arena rock flavor. So really cool. The next one is another really cool, interesting release that I've been enjoying. This has been Craven and his album Monsters from the Id. This was brought to my attention by The Prog Corner. I have to give him a shout out, really an incredible recommendation. His review is definitely one worth checking out where he really raves about this album. It's one of his, if not his favorite of the year so far. So really a fantastic one. I picked it up based on the strength of his recommendation. And I am really glad I did because this is expert symphonic progressive rock. Ben Craven is an Australian composer and multi-instrumentalist who rose to prominence back in 2005. This album is What's really remarkable about it is that Ben Craven is really helming the whole ship here. He's doing everything between all the instrumentation and the production and engineering and mastering. It's just all him putting this together, but it sounds so expansive and there's so much variety in the instrumentation and the music side of it. It's a, it's impressive feat that he's able to perform all of this himself and it really has a big cinematic feel to it. It feels like oftentimes like a soundtrack to a big sweeping epic movie and it really impressed me the the orchestration that's involved in this project. There's but there's also underneath all of this grand epic grandiose uh, symphony elements there's some great guitar playing, some great keyboard work, uh, some great singing moments and some great bass playing all throughout it that really showcases his talent in a lot of different areas but really the highlight to me is this big sweeping orchestration that really is throughout these tracks it's it's an album that on, is very short it's only 40 minutes it harkens back to maybe the classic prog type of albums with two sides there's two epics here one is 20 minutes the others you know 20 minutes as well there's die before you wake on the first side which is starting with this intense cinematic feel with big bombastic orchestration and this big kind of grand overture before some guitars enter in and solo it strips all the way to reveal Ben's vocals and a great piano section very beautiful there's a section I really love in this track I believe it's the warming glow section that's some great sounding acoustic guitar with keys on top and some swirling soundscapes very spacey and dreamy uh, almost reminding me of pink floyd with a wonderful synth solo that moves into this almost david gilmore-esque guitar solo a uh, really beautiful section leading to more big orchestration some heavier sounds i like how it's not there's not really any heavy harsh metal or anything like that on this record but he is able to evoke a similar feel by very intense orchestration and building these elements these different instruments to give the same vibe that a heavy guitar might or that crunchy guitar riffs might you know that's what brings this big sweeping dark feel to it at times and it's really interesting he almost has a classical style piano break throughout all of this through this orchestration we reprise the main lyrical theme before leading into a more bluesy laid-back section that focuses more on that David Gilmore style of guitar soloing and of course ends sort of where it began with some sweeping cinematic orchestration just a beautiful track that goes through so many different styles and moods and but always feels like it fits and that it's a singular piece of music this leads to side two, which is somewhat more of the same, but even more going into this darker feel of this big sweeping orchestration that just goes through several different movements, proggy sections, almost a haunted dark feel, haunting choir background. Really, really cool section with some intensity and big orchestrated sound, but also with those Gilmore-esque guitars leading the way. Really grandiose and epic in all the best ways. This is a great track as well that flows really expertly through many different sections. And so I'm really enamored with this album. I think Ben Craven is an incredible artist 
and I love the orchestrations that he provides, really expertly crafted, and it's just a great listen for those who like classic symphonic prog with these orchestrated elements. I think this could be right up your alley. Definitely worth checking out for all of you big major prog fans, especially those who like the more cinematic, majestic, symphonic elements of the style. So definitely one worth checking out. One I added to the list here somewhat last minute, uh, but I thought was interesting and worth discussing, uh, Mental Fracture and their album Disaccord. This is a new band. This is their debut album. This is a progressive rock and metal band based in Israel. And they say they draw inspiration from Dream Theater, Opeth, Porcupine Tree, as well as prog classics like Camel and King Crimson, along others. I'm not sure I hear all those influences, to be perfectly honest. I feel like I hear more of an eclectic prog sort of flavor, maybe more along the lines of Haken, or even I heard someone compare them to Sky Architect, which I think is a great call. More of a quirky, cool, modern prog band uh, with some jazzy leanings. Really, really interesting music, though, that I really was enjoying. This is just a very cool work for a band that is just starting out. This was just released not too long ago, independently produced. Uh, the themes of the songs within revolve around the concepts of cognitive dissonance, the games we play with ourselves to cope with it. The songs in the album vary constantly and change their genre, gliding through jazz, oriental music, and synth yet always staying centered around fierce, energetic rock and metal. I think that's a pretty fair description of the music. There's just so many cool jazzy guitar licks, impressive vocal ticks and things, jazzy keys, really cool instrumental sections. It kind of, like I said, it kind of reminds me of the aesthetic of Haken and how they have interesting songs and are willing to go off in these quirky instrumental proggy sections within these songs and they're always interesting and varied and going through different styles uh, especially Goodbye Forever has a big sinister darker vibe towards the end like Haken some impassioned singing some interesting synth work really cool Hello has some jazzy stuff going on in the mix some great singing keys and drumming before getting into those quirkier proggy bits it switches between a lighter and a darker kind of feel throughout the song. There's almost a gentle giant-like flavor in sections. So it just it continues on like that. There's some great, great tracks on here. Inception of Fear has some chugging guitar riffs, some organ in the background that I found fascinating. The singer can sometimes sound a little bit like the lead singer from Leprous at times. So I think Leprous is another touchstone for this group. Um, Disaccord has some really interesting styles and is an instrumental that goes through heavy and metallic sections, some symphonic rock kind of stuff, some jazzy, playful fun, hints of video game inspired synths, which again reminds me of Haken. Just a really cool, eclectic album that I was really enjoying as I was listening through, uh, especially for a debut. It shows that this band has a bright future and maybe could expand upon what they're doing here and make for something even more interesting in the future. So definitely one worth checking out if you like that quirkier, jazzier style progressive rock and metal, almost along the lines of Haken, of Sky Architect, and those types of bands, really fun. And I had a lot of fun listening to it, so I wanted to, to mention it and recommend it as well. All right, next, kind of want to go through these last couple uh, ones a little bit quicker. Uh, the next one, I wanted to mention Coheed and Cambria and their new album, A Window of the Waking Mind. Coheed and Cambria is a very interesting group. It's, it's a group I've always tried to, to like, but have struggled a little bit through their catalog, if I'm being perfectly honest. It's a band that I feel like I should like because of the bands that, that speak to me the most. I know they deal a lot with concept albums and have this modern prog sort of style and aesthetic that usually speaks to me, but sometimes their albums aren't varied enough for my taste or they have a similar structure from album to album that isn't varied enough or interesting enough for me. But I want to always give them a chance and always listen to their newest releases. And so I tried this one out and listened through the album and I. 
I believe it's it's a really good album. It's really solid. There's some really cool tracks. Um, really what stands out to me is the final trilogy of songs. To me, it's like the album finally opens up when it gets to Ladders of Supremacy with some cool proggy moments, explosive opening, interesting vocal melody. It just sounds much more interesting and developed than the, the tracks that came before. And the tracks that came before it aren't bad. They're good tracks, they're solid, but they don't sound like they're doing much uh, different than I've heard before with them on other records. Maybe adding a bit more of this kind of synthwave influence, some electronica sounds, almost a disco-y, dancey kind of vibe to accompany their typical hard rock style and pop punk kind of sound that they tend to have on their releases. But nothing really grabs me especially compared to some of their other works. It feels like just a typical album until we get to, like I'm saying, Ladders of Supremacy, which has some interesting sci-fi atmospherics that accentuates the prog flourishes and leads right to Rise Nainasha, uh, Cut the Chord, which is an interesting track as well. A great, great transition from into this track. An interesting guitar figure and vocal starts this one. It has a pleasant melody and a unique backing sound design. A bigger pop hook chorus to it, but it's a really, really good streamlined track that I think flows really well from Ladders of Supremacy. And then we reach the big epic of the album window of the waking mind which is so cool and goes through so many different feels and styles some great acoustic guitar and orchestration and a cool vocal melody opens it some beautiful string sounds in the back of this kind of a big cinematic type of quality the music builds and becomes more epic as it continues along there's a great section with almost spoken vocals over riffs and the music is stripped away to a great beautiful acapella vocal before the heaviness comes back. It's just a great journey between heavier and lighter sounding music and there's a great moment where piano is highlighted underneath some passionate sweet vocals and it ends with a big orchestral sweep somewhat like out of a musical perhaps. So this is really interesting. If the whole album was of this quality, it would be one of my favorite albums of the year. It was just such a great closing to this album. It really took me off guard. I was enjoying the album and going along track to track thinking, you oh, know, this is a good hook. This is a good section. There's some interesting stuff here, but nothing was really standing out to me till I got to this end trio of songs. So if you're into Coed and Cambria and like their style, please check this out it's really cool if nothing else check out the final trio of tracks which is really really interesting progressive rock i think they did an expert job with that and i just wish the full album had more of that at the beginning and through the midsection so that's kind of my take on the coed and cambria record and then finally i wanted to mention one that i've just barely been listening to but i think was worthy of mentioning this is return to the earth on the album fall of the watcher <laughs> Uh, this is a, a really cool group, Return to the Earth. Um, they're from Warwickshire in UK, formed in late 2014. Interesting lineup, Robin Peachy on vocals and guitar, Steve Peachy on keyboards, and Paul Johnston on drums. And this is more of the laid back atmospheric Pink Floyd type feel. I think Pineapple Thief is another good reference point, and maybe some of the more laid back type work from Stephen Wilson even but it's really expertly crafted the sound is really good and it's just a good album to kind of sit back and let wash over you and soak up and it has just some incredible spacey style music uh fall of the watcher the first track is just a really cool uh opening that's almost near 10 minutes long has these david gilmore-esque guitar sounds a uh, great vocal delivery from Robin Peachy, almost sort of this hybrid between Peter Nichols of IQ and Stephen Wilson, uh, and it just really goes along in a satisfying direction. Wonderful extended dynamic uh, guitar soloing, great drum drums and bass beneath, just really solid music. Kind of reminds me of the Bjorn Rees album that I reviewed uh, a little while back on a previous New Music Shuffle episode. It has that similar vibe, maybe not quite. I believe that one had maybe more of a heavier element to parts of it, but this is a much more atmospheric, laid-back album that you can enjoy just soaking it up and relaxing to is kind of how I take it. White Room is just a beautiful shorter track, hypnotic and melodic. They bring some light 
electronica type feel to some of the back of uh, music and keyboard sounds. Uh, Drowning has a bit of a Porcupine Tree David Sylvian feel to it with Richard Barbary style uh, keyboards and syncopated rhythms. Really great vocal performance. Sacrificed in Vain is another longer track similar to the opening track. Some great, great chunky bass and power drums and heavier rock guitar uh, come in partway through the album giving a little bit of a heavier vibe compared to the more laid back uh, sections that come before it but it's just it's a beautiful psychedelic style album with some really bluesy guitar solos some really fun uh, beautiful styled vocals and just a really fun listen that i was enjoying uh, if you like bands like pink floyd uh, the earlier days of porcupine tree maybe iq even in their lighter moments some really great stuff here that i've been enjoying i think it's an album worth checking out so and those are the albums that I had for you guys today. A really cool collection of different types of music from the heavier end of the spectrum like Charlie Griffiths to the more quirky, proggy stuff like Bubble Math to a more laid back, atmospheric type Pink Floyd vibe like this Return to the Earth album. So really cool stuff. Hopefully there's something out there for you guys in this list. Let me know your music that you've been enjoying throughout the month of June, some releases that I may have missed. I know there's people who've mentioned things in my other videos of like, why haven't you talked about this band? Why haven't you talked about that album? And you know, I just try to check out what I'm able to and talk about whatever grabs me most. I've heard some of the other albums, but these are the ones that really grabbed my attention more than anything else I listened to. So I, those are the ones I want to focus on and give as recommendations. So hopefully you guys will be understanding of that, but I really appreciate your recommendations. And oftentimes it leads me to discovering a great new album that I didn't know about. So please leave your recommendations in the, in the comments or talk about how you feel about any of these records. And I just hope you guys are having a great time out there and enjoying the music, whatever you've got playing in your neck of the woods. So uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet. I try to do these about monthly, this new music shuffle style show to recommend some great stuff, but there's so much other stuff on the channel to enjoy as well. Some weekly news features, some stuff I do with my wife as we listen and react to old and new prog. And it's just a fun time to be had by all. So thank you guys so much for joining me and hopefully I'll see you in another video. Bye everybody.